Okay, I'm here with Lou Verdales, uh, who has uh, been given the honor of driving a very unique car. Now, if you grew up in the 80s, were probably a teenager, you had a good chance that this poster, a picture of this car was on your wall. This was the car that uh, uh, resembled the 935s that made Porsche famous right here in Daytona. Um, but this car has a special history. It, uh, it um, was sent back to Germany and uh, had some magic touches put on it, and this is the end result. So Lou, why don't you give us a uh, rundown on, on what made this car special? I guess to begin with first, what does the uh, DP uh, stand for? Uh, DP uh, is the uh, name of the company, and it stands for Design Plastics. They were a, uh, they still are, a major producer of composites and GRP components. And uh, the way they uh, introduced themselves into motorsport was by providing the bodywork for the original Kramer 935 and 934 cars. They then uh, began producing their own product, which of course they called the uh, DP 935. And these cars were all uh, typically specced out by the buyers. Uh, there's really no, tr truly no uh, uh, DP that's uh, 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 equal to the other. They're all, they're all different in their own uh, specific ways. But of note is that you will see the uh, bodywork modifications are all slant noses. You'll have some variances as where the headlights are placed, whether they had the retractable headlights or the fixed headlights on the spoiler. You had the 935 style mirrors. You had the rocker panels uh, blended into the rear flares, which were extended one inch with the air inlets for the rear brakes. And they also modified the rear quarter panels to come up higher than the stock Porsche parts, as you can see down here, to be able to accommodate another style of bumper that they also offered for this car that, although was better looking, offered basically no impact protection. Uh, this particular car in the interior has their uh, trademark uh, manual boost control which is mounted on that console, which is welded. Every single uh, DP, that's one of the distinguishing features, had that manual boost control in that uh, console, which is welded to the shifter tunnel. Typical of that era, you will see a lot of aftermarket electronics added to the car, like the, uh, the high-end stereo and the uh, uh, higher-powered cassette player. The uh, aftermarket uh, uh, colored gauge faces in this particular car, they're red to match the bodywork. <coughs> But the most interesting feature of this car is the 3.4 roof BTR engine that was uh, installed when the car was built at DP. Let's walk around, walk around the side here and take a look at that. Now I also noticed that the uh, wing is a little larger, longer than normal. The reason for that is that uh, DP spec'd out this wing to allow for larger intercoolers to be installed on the car. And of course this wing gives you an additional four and a half inches to the back to allow you to use a full width intercooler that's also longer uh, in length. Now, is the bodywork, it says, of course, designed plastic. Is the bodywork steel or is it fiberglass or composite? Uh, all these add on components are glass, glass reinforced plastics or GRP, uh, uh, very close to fiberglass. And uh, as you can see, they actually mold these parts into the, uh, the metal bodywork of the car. Now, the uh, turbos of that era were running, I think, three threes. Um, what was this, what's this running here? The output of this engine at the flywheel, according to Roof, is just a little above 400 horsepower. Uh, and uh, the typical 3.3 Euro engine of that era was putting out around 300. So it's just about 100 horsepower more with a very uh, good uh, usable torque spread. It's a little bit larger displacement and Roof used a little bit higher uh, static compression than the factory did. So this is a 3.4 and the little bit higher compression gave it much, much better off-boost performance. And did it still use the four-speed? This is still the factory four-speed. Now, of course, now today we have 18, 19 inches that are standard on cars, but back then we didn't have those sizes, but we did have a, a 15 inch, and these look like, my, my, it's huge. What, what's the width of these wheels? These are 15 by 11, original Fuchs, and then on the front we have 15 by nines. And uh, a, a, a particular note is today uh, the the available tires for these uh, a suitable tires for this car that that requisite size are almost impossible to find, which means that soon we'll be have to buy race rubber to run these cars on the street. Now you uh, services at your shop, uh, and what's the name of the shop? Uh, Aerodynamics here in Port Orange. And you're uh, you're driving for one of your customers. What's it like to drive on the street? It's, uh, it's an absolute dream. Uh, once we uh, uh, sorted out some of the minor mechanical issues that the car uh, had when it was acquired, uh, the car is very, very nice to drive right now. Of course, the, the, the accelerating performance, uh, great brakes, uh, what's, what's not to like? 
this is a particular car that, as you said before, uh, signifies the 80s. And, and I did have a poster of one of these when I was a kid. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember that most of the uh, baseball players and the big celebrities back in that day, they all had a DP. So it was, uh, it's, a, it's an icon of that era and uh, you either love it or hate it, but I'll have to admit that I do love it. Well, it's definitely a lucky car, and when, when you get uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, you, people notice you on the street when you drive it? Oh, yeah. No, it it, uh, it gets a lot of attention. And uh, like I say, there's uh, <clears throat> it just uh, screams at you. I promise I won't tell the owner, but how far have you taken up that boost knob? Uh, actually, I have it disabled because for uh, pump gasoline, I feel that you should not run more than 0.9. Uh, you need to have that extra margin of safety uh, against a batch of uh, bad gasoline. And at point nine, it's just sufficient power. Uh, I respect this car very much, and, and I, uh, I uh, encourage my, uh, my owners to do the same. Uh, uh, love the car and treat it with respect. Well, there you go. And Pat, the owner, when you're watching, Lou's taking good care of it. It's got a great parking spot. Got a lot of looks here at the uh, Daytona Corral at the 24 Rolex.